Hi folks, welcome back and thanks for joining. So it's becoming increasingly important to have methods of being able to sanitize different surfaces. So what we're going to do is we're going to explore all the alternatives that are available so that you can have 100% assurance that you have obliterated any biologic unknown. Okay, so before we get started on that, I want to just point out a couple of charts that I've put in the links for you. Okay, uh, what cleaning products that you should not mix together. Okay, um, go over that. Make sure you understand it completely before you attempt to mix any of these products together. As um, some of them can have disastrous results when mixed. And the other is uh, something that uh, the EPA puts out, uh, Clorox or bleach, and what percentages you need to properly make and use sanitizers and disinfectants. And there's a link for that below as well. Okay. <clears throat> Pardon me. Now, before we get started on any of that, the source material for all of these sanitizers is coming from the EPA, the Enlist, which is updated daily. And as of the 13th of March, the EPA has put hydrogen peroxide on the list of disinfectants that will kill the coronavirus. Pass that along. Okay, these products each in certain percentages will do the job and we can, uh, for instance, Lysol is a quaternary ammonia. If you have that, that's the type of cleaning it does. And of course now the EPA, this product is on that list and you can see from there. One very important thing about any of these cleaning products and that is contact time. Contact time is critical to the effectiveness of any of these or anything that you yourself mix up. Now this is critical. Contact time. That's the big boy right there. Okay? That's what's going to kill any unknown biologic. Alright, so let's pick any of these. We all know that uh, they're quickly becoming hard to find. What are you going to do if you don't have any of that? That's why the oven's here. I want to first point out, bring this up in the beginning. 160 degrees, that's 71 Celsius for 30 minutes will completely obliterate any unknown biologic. This is your fail-safe right here. Now, to conserve resources, the oven also works in ways that some things that you have been spraying or wiping, if they can go into the oven safely, there's another option to conserve your solutions. Also, of critical importance, many of these have an expire date. And in particular, Clorox has an expire date. Now, something like Lysol, it is formulated with stabilizers to ensure that it has effectiveness for a long time. Another thing is it's an opaque bottle and it has a wrapper around it and this is to shield it even further from light which is also the big enemy for these two right here. Sunlight dramatically affects how they uh, are effective and to keep them active inside the container if you'll notice this is a very thick white plastic it shields it from the sunlight. 
peroxide is even more sensitive. That's why it's in a brown bottle. Alcohol, of course, is not effective. Alcohol is effective only for the surfaces that it touches. And after that, it can be re-effective. Okay. Infected. Okay, so we're going to start with uh, Clorox today. We're going to go over some very basic um, percentages for different applications and different surfaces. So that's where we're going to start first. Okay, for me to uh, mix this, I'm going to follow this chart, but uh, I'm going to start at the bottom and work my way up because uh, the small math works easier that way. So they want a third cup per one gallon of water and two tablespoons bleach per one quart of water. Uh, this gives a 1,000 parts per million solution. Um, now the uh, CDC uses this same uh, material and they, uh, they say that a 10% solution is high enough to completely obliterate any unknown biologic to 100% assurance. So that's where we're going to start at the bottom. We're going to start with a 10% solution. Conveniently, most bleach bottle caps, and uh, I've been checking it a few times, but any that have the, uh, the big cap like this, that's uh, 10 milliliters. So what you need to make a 10% solution, of course, is 90 milliliters of water and one cap full of bleach. And that makes a small quantity to a 10% solution. However, now, at 10%, that's really strong, okay? If you use that too much, you can uh, start burning your skin or other surfaces. This is for uh, aggressive uh, direct contact with the unknown. For general cleaning and food contact, and we're going to jump up to the top and now work our way down, uh, they're recommending a 200 parts per million solution. So we know now that our 10% solution is 1,000 parts per million, so we can divide that to dilute it. And the reason I'm saying this is because anything that we make with many of these uh, DIY hand, sign, hand sanitizer and wipe and cleaning solutions, they're only good for 24 hours. So we want to make small batches. So we're not going to make a 10% uh, solution in an entire gallon of water because uh, on a daily basis, you won't use that much. To make enough Hand, hand wipes for a day. Well, and I'm looking around because I put it somewhere. You want to make small batches. Something that would fit in something like this. Uh, how many sanitizing wipes do you use per day? Well, I use one. If I can help it. Up to a point. Because what I do, and yep, you got me. I'm the Ziploc bag guy. These things are effective as long as they are moist. So, keep them moist in a baggie. And this bleach solution is in a baggie. Keep it nice and dry on the outside so that it doesn't get on your clothes and you can keep it in your pocket. Okay. Make a day's work. Toss it out wash with soap to sanitize it and then begin again with the next day's solutions. Now, if you want, of course, for the stronger stuff, for cleaning tables and gentle, you know, uh, general wiping down uh, different uh, types of surfaces, you may want to put them in a spray bottle. Okay. Now, uh, if you can all avoid it, 
don't use a clear one. If you do, well, try to wrap it somehow. You don't want the sunlight hitting the bridge. It deactivates it more quickly. Now, a container that is used, and chances are it's used up, and I hope you still have it, is the empty Lysol container. Okay? Yeah. You can take your solution and you can pour it directly into that. It already has an opaque finish, like I've mentioned before, and the wrapper to help reduce the light. And don't make a whole, up a whole bunch now. Remember, this is going in 24 hours as well. Okay. So, um, good ways to use this stuff, um, for instance, yep, mine's empty too. Spraying something porous, like the egg container, uh, ideal. Now comes the part where we're going to uh, begin carrying groceries from outside into the apartment. So we're going to be using a lot of the spray. And I've seen some good ideas. And I just want to share uh, another idea with you. And uh, that is, uh, if you can, just... Uh, leave them outside for three days and sanitize only what you have to bring in for the next three days. Uh, anything frozen especially, uh, it won't stay out. So, and let the sunshine take care of it outside for three days. Uh, what I do is those grocery bags, I put them in a bag that I have. It's a reusable bag that I know is clean because I sanitize it with the chlorides. So uh, these are some options. Uh, leave it outside if you can. When you bring it in, well, use the 10% solution. Dip what you can. I, I've tested it myself and I was able to dip a frozen package. Now contact time, 10 minutes, uh, to assure 100%. It's 10 minutes. Uh, for general cleaning and stuff like that, it gets the light. Uh, it is two minutes. Yeah. Uh, folks, I'll always tell you right away. Uh, the number one is, uh, so it's 20 seconds. Nothing beats it. Nothing beats it. Uh, so, so, and it's still easy to get. You can get soap in a lot of different forms. I hope this has been helpful, and um, take care. Bye-bye now.